This is an example, a uh, problem of how to apply kinematic equations to a, um, a, an object in free fall. So the situation is we are throwing a ball off of a tall tower. We're, we're told that the tower is a distance d1 above the ground. <clears throat> that is to say it's at um, y is equal to d1 if you want to put your origin at the bottom. And uh, we throw with an initial velocity of v0 at an angle of theta0. I haven't put the knot there, but that's my angle theta at which I throw the ball initially. So the first step in solving any two-dimensional kinematic problem is to um, break everything down into your two dimensions. Well, I should say the first step is to draw a picture, but I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my v naught and I'm going to break it down into its x and y components. Notice as this ball travels, v naught is going to change direction and magnitude all over the place. At every point in space it will have a different direction and magnitude and that makes this problem very difficult to solve unless we break V0 into components because in that case at every point in space um, the vectors may or may not have a different magnitude but they are all pointed in the same direction and that makes the problems very easy to solve or at least easier. So the first thing we're going to do is resolve this into components right? <clears throat> and let me just draw that a little bigger for you uh, let me change color on this pen. Here are my axes. That's terrible. Here are my axes. And here is my V0 vector. So I've zoomed in, right? I've got V0 here. And this is an angle theta. I've zoomed in on the front of, on the top of my building. <coughs> just to show you the process of resolving these into components. So just visually, I can see that my x component is going to look a little bit like this. This is going to be my v naught x. My y component, let me change colors, will look something like this. Right. So to actually calculate those, I've got to go through the trig functions. Uh, if you haven't done that, I encourage you to practice rearranging those definitions of the sine and cosine functions until you know exactly what to do you start to recognize the forms. Um, but what that will look like <clears throat> is this v naught x is equal to v naught cosine theta. And v naught y is equal to v naught sine of theta. Right? Um, that's just simple trig functions. Again, if, that is, if that's unusual to you, if you look at that and don't know what I did, please go through the definition of trig functions uh, and rearrange, get practice rearranging those equations. <clears throat> so now, this is good stuff. I have an initial velocity in my x direction. I have an initial velocity in my y direction. And I can solve the system for lots of information. Uh, one of the normal things that you would be asked for in a problem like this is what is the total flight time? In other words, from the minute that you release the ball here to when, to when the ball hits the ground here, it is in the air for a certain amount of time, and we want to know what the total flight time is. So let me go to a new slide and write down some kinematic equations. <clears throat> so, well, sorry, before I do that, uh, we're going to follow the same strategy that we've been following in solving two-dimensional problems. We're going to break it up into two pieces. A natural place to break up any uh, uh, projectile motion problem is at the point right here <clears throat> where the ball reaches the apex of its motion. This is a natural point because at that point, Vy right there is equal to zero. This is when, if you throw a ball straight up in the air, this is when the ball comes to a rest before coming back down. Uh, in the y direction, this is exactly what happens. The velocity of the y... Uh, the, the VY component is zero at that point, and that's why we like it. So the first thing I'm going to do in trying to figure out the total flight time of this object is solve from my time to the apex. So now, let me go to a different slide. <clears throat> so I'm going to solve for T sub A, that stands for apex. This is what I want. And what I'm going to get, or how I'm going to do it, is I'm going to look at my kinematic equations. I'm going to figure out, is there one that has the information that I have at my disposal and uh, only one unknown in it. So let me write down what I know. Knowns. I know V naught 
x. I know v naught y. I know d1, although that might not be important for this for this particular problem. And I also know a y. Now you might say, well, what are you talking about? There's no a y on here. That's true, but this is in free fall, right? We're going to do things like ignore air resistance. The only thing uh, affecting it is gravity. So I know because it's in free fall that my ay is equal to minus g. I also know what my ax is. And again, you might say, what are you talking about? There's no ax here. Uh, and so I will say that, again, we're in free fall. There's only gravity acting on this thing. Gravity acts downwards. It acts wholly in the y direction. And so my x motion will be unaffected by gravity. So I know that my ax, a sub x, is equal to zero. Okay? So now I've got what I know. I'm going to look at my kinematic equations. I'm going to figure out, is there something there that I, um, that I don't know? Uh, or is there, is there something in there that has one thing I don't know and everything else I know? And in point of fact, there is. And it's this equation here. V final is equal to V initial plus AT. So I said a while ago that at this point, at the apex of its motion, this point I've labeled right here, uh, its velocity is zero. So that's actually what I'm going to use for my final velocity. Because remember, final just means where I'm stopping looking at the motion. And I'm stopping at the apex. My velocity final is zero. My velocity initial I know is V naught y and my acceleration and I should say let me go ahead and put this in v naught y I've calculated let me go back to my previous page calculated v naught y right here it's just v naught sine theta lots of v naughts running around don't let them confuse you v naught sine theta and over here in my knowns I should put theta I know what theta is I also know what my acceleration is. My acceleration is minus g. So this is nice. I'm, I'm actually looking for t to the apex, and I have this equation, which gives me a t, and I know everything else in there, right? So if I rearrange this equation, let me just draw a box to get rid of, <clears throat> to show you what I'm doing. If I rearrange this equation, I get um, v naught sine theta is equal to gt. Of course that means t, and this is, I should put apex, I'm subscribed with an a because this is my time to the apex, that is equal to v naught sine theta over g. Okay, so just to re reiterate what I've done, I found the time that it took the ball to go from this point here to this point here. Right? Now that's not what I'm being asked to find, I'm being asked to find the total flight time. Uh, so I still need to figure out how long this thing takes to hit the ground. However, I have some tools at my disposal to do that. Uh, so, in the next video, we will talk about one way to do that, and then I'll make another video talking about another way to do that. For, so, for now, what we've found is the time of the ball to its apex.